So we talked a lot about joints, joints and bones. Um, now there's a couple other MSK injuries I want to cover, and for this video we're going to cover all of this. Okay, so it's mis miscellaneous other stuff. So it's the shoulder. We're going to talk about the rotator cuff muscles. It's four of them. I mean, uh, remember with the mnemonic sits in that order. So from top going around, you can get the supraspinatus. Function here is abduction, so raising your arm. And this does the first 15 degrees, and then after that, the deltoid muscle will do the rest for the abduction. That's actually kind of important. Uh, remember that the supraspinatus uh, raises your arm for the first 15 degrees, and the deltoid takes over. Uh, and the innervation of this is the suprascapular nerve. Next is the infraspinatus muscle, and this functions for external rotation of your arm. <laughs> Um, and the innervation is the suprascapular nerve again. So very easy. The first two, the spinatus, are have suprascapular nerve innervation. Next, going around is the teres minor muscle. Again, it does external rotation. Also, does a bit of adduction. And this is the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. Finally, the subscapularis uh, muscle. This is internal rotation, adduction, subscapular nerve. It's kind of easy. Subscapular muscle, subscapular nerve. Um, and the supraspinatus, infraspinatus of the suprascapular nerves. The rest of the muscles, you can kind of, if you know the physical exam, which I hope you do, then you should be able to know which of the, which these muscles, um, what each of these muscles do. Next, go to the shoulder, the elbow. I'm sorry, and um, the elbow you can get epicondylitis. There's a le uh, medial and the lateral, and I always had trouble differentiating the two. Um, so the medial one's called golfer's elbow and it's due to repetitive flexion. So repetitive flexion leading to pain at the medial epicondyle. And the way you the way I figured out how to remember this and never forget it is Phil Mickelson. And I've altered his name for our purposes to F L F I L Mickelson. And that stands for flexion and the medial epicondylitis. And that's golfer's elbow because Phil Mickelson is a golfer. And if you want to look anatomically, um, just for interest's sake, this is the medial epicondyle in the picture. You have all these flexor muscles here. So you can see how if you flex so much, you can get inflammation here and pain. Honestly, you just have to remember Phil Michelson um, is medial flexion leading to medial epicondylitis, which is also called known as golfer's elbow. And after that lateral epicondylitis, it's just the opposite. It's the total opposite of medial epicondylitis. You get repetitive extension leading to pain at the lateral epicondyle. Alright, next is the hands and the wrist. We're going to talk about anatomy here a little bit. Um, there's a couple carpal bones that you should know about. So, there's a lot of them. Eight. And I suggest first aid is a nice mnemonic. I kind of just brutally memorized it. But... Starting from here, this is scaphoid, this is the lunate, um, pisiform, triquetium, and then if you go back this way, you can get the, um, the hamate muscle, capitate, capitate, capitate muscle, um, bone, I'm sorry, trapezoid, trapezium. So you brute memorize it. Look at first aid. Do what you need to do. Now, the first thing to note is that the scaphoid fracture, which we said was this one, is the most commonly fractured, which is due to a fall in an out outstretched hand. And you're going to get tenderness at the anatomical stuff box, which I've pointed out here. And um, for this problem, for this disease, you're at risk for avascular necrosis. Because there's, there's a very poor blood supply that happens. Let me erase all this. And try to explain this to you. So you have this like blood vessel here, and there's a little bit of a small branch here. And when you fracture that scaphoid, scaphoid bone, you can mess up. You can lose this blood supply, and then you're gonna get necrosis of that bone. So that's the risk factor for a scaphoid fracture. The next pathology is a metacarpal neck fracture. Metacarpal is this one, 
this is a boxer's fracture this happens often when you punch someone and honestly if you just think about it you punch a wall what's going to hurt the most it's going to be the metacarpals so it's pretty it's pretty simple and pretty easy to know um and most commonly it's the fourth and fifth metacarpals that are going to be injured next we're going to take a look at the hand muscles here and there's a couple first of all we're going to look at the thinner eminence which is by the thumb so this is the thinner eminence then we're going to go look at the hyperthenar eminence, which is this side. And it's pretty much the same muscles in both of them, with mildly different names. And you remember the, the muscles with oaf, the mnemonic oaf. So this is opponent's pollicis, opponent's um, finger opposition. Abductor pollicis brevis, so it's um, finger your thumb at abduction. Finally, flexor pollicis brevis, which is th um, thumb flexion. And then it's pretty much the same thing, but um, slightly different names for the hypothenar eminence. Next, you have the interossei, which are um, they're between the fingers, as you can see here. Now, your dorsal interossei abduct your fingers, so spread them out, and your palmar interossei adduct your fingers, so they put them back together. I always, for some, I just remember they're, they're actually the letters are totally opposite. Um, so the dorsal abduct, the palmar adduct. Um, I just remember that they don't correspond, so that's how I remember it. Finally, you have the lumbricals, which flex your MCP, extend PIP, and the DIP, which is super complicated to remember. So I just remember this picture here. You hold your finger, hold your hand out like that exactly. And that's exactly what your lumbricals do. Okay, flexion of the MCP, extension of the uh, the PIP, and of the DIP. So it's very easy. Just look at that picture, and you will know what the lumbricals do. A uh, quick look at the the wrist, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is important, very commonly tested um, pathology. So your median nerve run, runs through the wrist, and it runs through this little area called the carpal tunnel. And um, as you can see here, it's in close proximity to this ligament here, the flexor reticula, reticulum, which is also known as the transverse carpal ligament. So you can compress it, and you're going to cause symptoms. Um, and usually you get compression because um, there's going to be s some other thing going on that reduces the space in this tunnel. For example, you're going to have pregnancy which causes edema in your, in your hand and in the rest of your body. So there's compression. You get hypothyroidism. Um, there's a buildup of something called glycosaminoglycans, which also reduce space. Um, diabetes will cause connective tissue thickening. So you're going to thickening here. A compression and then rheumatoid arthritis can also get an inflammation of the tendon and then um, compress the nerve so when you have nerve compression if you've, if you've watched the neuro videos um, it's very classic symptoms you always get you get symptoms of pain tingling numbness um, and then remember this is the median nerve that was compressed this is the key the median nerve compression so all those symptoms what was the symptoms again pain tingling numbness it's going to be in the median nerve distribution. Remember, that's the first three fingers, uh, first three and a half, really. So it's going to be like this. The, this this part's going to be affected, and you're going to get atrophy of the thinner eminence to the thumb. So it's going to weaken because um, that's also innervated by the the median nerve, and it's not going to be used as much. So that muscle is going to atrophy. And finally, you're going to have a positive tino and phalen sign. So a tino sign is when you um you percuss the wrist, you tap on that wrist, which is by the median nerve. So if you think about it, you're tapping on it, you're, you're, and then if it's compressed, you're going to actually exacerbate that compression, and you're going to tingle it. And Phelan sign is going to flex the wrist 90 degrees. And when you do that, again, you get tingling. Again, so when you flex that wrist, you can think about it, you can get increased compression of that median nerve. Similarly, we have the Guillain Canal syndrome. So this is the analog, it's compression of the ulnar nerve at the wrist. And it's classically, it's going to be due to handlebar compression. So it's going to be compressing and pressing on that, that um, the ulnar side of the wrist, and the ulnar nerve is going to get compressed. Again, it's similar, same thing. Compression of the nerve leading to pain, tingling, and numbness, and this is going to be in the ulnar nerve distribution. So remember, the ulnar nerve, when we draw it out, is this, this side of it. All right, so, uh, final, uh, we're going to go to the hip and then knee couple more. So at the hip, 
you can have something called tro trochanteric bursitis. Um, this is a very common cause of lateral hip pain. It's not going to be tested as much, but clinically it's more common. Um, and you have inflammation of the gluteus minimus, medius or the minimi tendon. And that's going to lead to inflammation. In the, um, actually, this is a misnomer. So it's not really the bursa itself that gets inf inflamed. It's the tendon. But um, it's in that general area leading to lateral, lateral hip pain. You treat it, just infl and treat inflammation. Treat with NSAIDs, give them some heat, and you stretch them out. So knee pain or knee problems. Classically, uh, ACL tear. It's due to uh, t uh, lateral forces on a planted leg. So think about usually the sports players, like soccer players, basketball players. They plant their leg, it's planted, and then um, they, they like, twist or they turn or they, someone pushes on them. You get lateral force, you're going to tear that ACL tendon. And you present with knee pain and joint instability. Uh, classically, it's associated with the unhappy triad, so you can have uh, multiple injuries at the same time, such as injury to the ACL, the, um, the anterior, anterior, something like that, anterior, I don't even remember what it's called anymore, uh, anterior cruciate ligament, you can have tear of the medial cruciate ligament, the MCL, and the medial meniscus. Next is preprotellar bursitis. So uh, your knee has many bursa in it, which are kind of like fluid-filled sacs, okay? And there is a prepatellar bursa, which, I'm, which is circled here. And I'm going to draw an arrow just for safety's sake. And again, it's right above the patella. So it's prepatellar. It's right above it. And if you, if you kneel too much or there's repeated traumas, you get inflammation. It's going to cause pain. But classically, it's the excessive kneeling. So you're going to see someone like a painter or someone that works on their knees a lot, some construction worker. Um, they're going to have knee pain, you're going to know it's prepatellar bursitis. Uh, next is the Baker cyst. Um, there's a, it's a fluid collection in the popliteal region, so that's right behind the knee. Um, and it's due to inflammation of the synovium. So remember, the synovium is what produces that synovial fluid. So if you inflame it, it's going to be, it's going like, to like get leaky. It's going to produce extra fluid. It's going to collect right in that popliteal region. And uh, note that this is related, often related to the inflammatory or degenerative joint disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. Remember, those are inflamm those cause inflammation locally or systemically, and then can lead to excessive synovial fluid production. Our right, ankle, finally, last one, very last one. Our right, ankle sprain, very, very common injury. I'm sure you've almost sprained or probably have sprained your ankle already. Um, most commonly is of the lateral ankle, and there's the anterior tallow fibular ligament. So that's the ATL. This one, anterior talofibular ligament always tears first. Okay, this is the most commonly teared one due to inversion of the foot, which is pretty much if you think inversion of the foot, that's pretty much if you ever sprain your ankle, that's the way it goes. All right, so that's it for our little um, miscellaneous pathologies and problems.